But I'm recording now. All right. Well, you know what, dude? Besides that, why don't you um? Why don't we make a test run to make sure that the uh? Well, it's not it's not lagging right now. All right. Well, remember last time it didn't record any of the audio. Mm -hmm. Um, no, last time, dude, it was the headphones. Uh, didn't know that. Yeah, that's what caused it. I didn't use Audacity last time. What did you use last time? I used Filmora. Uh, so, we're going. All right. How's it going, everybody? Uh, nobody listens Wait to this podcast. To nobody listens to this podcast, dude. Hey, uh, did you... Hey, you got some viewers. Hey, listen. First of all, you got to think more highly of yourself, Jay. You know, you think positive, you get positive, all right? And secondly, you had six comments on one of your videos the other day, and I was thoroughly impressed. Dude, I like, dude. I'm in. But, dude, you got to think something, man. I got a fucking, I have an inner cunt. And it's, uh, I have to keep that under control. And it's fueled by narcissism, which is poison. So I have to keep that shit under control. It's the same thing with, I, I asked one of my. But you got a demographic, man. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I asked, I asked, I asked a group of, I, I, or I asked my friend, I go, am I thinking wrong about this i go there is a there's comedians working in tampa and i go up after them or before them and i get as many laughs if not more so my question was am i think i asked her i said am i being arrogant thinking that i could actually do this professionally she told me no so well, <clears throat> well there's one key word in there. It said in Tampa. <laughs> wow, I dude, dude, we talked. Oh, I talked about this on a different podcast. I'm just fucking around. Yeah, I'm just joking around. There's uh, Tampa's a city. You're gonna have comedians, but it's just funny. Well, dude, it's Tampa. I'll just put it out there. I'll just put it out there like this. I've seen, I've seen guys here that are funnier than like seventy percent of the comedians specials that I watch on Netflix. Mm -hmm. y y you know, I there's there's comedians that I watch on Netflix and I'm just I look at the audience and I'm like, "Why are you laughing at this?" <laughs> like, d do I have to be there? You know, because we when we went and saw uh Brendan Shop, we both came away impressed at how good he was at only 3 years. And that dude gets a lot of hate, but yet there's comedians that I seen that I know I could go to their show and I wouldn't laugh at one joke that they said throughout mm -hmm. that thing. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. I don't want to call any names out, but I've, I've, I've seen people headlining that. Why? Like, Amy oh, Schumer shit. sucks. You're, yeah, you're, you're definitely a middle at best. But, um, you did hear what I said, yeah. right? What? You did hear what I sucks? I said Amy Schumer sucks. Oh, I thought you said you're Hoomer sucks. Yeah. Um. You ain't wrong, dude. I, dude, I've never. I, I, I don't think I've ever seen. I don't. I don't think I've ever seen a bit she's done that's remotely even funny. I don't know. I just end up turning her. I. I think I made it through her last special just because I was like, John. You have to do something that sucks in life. So you decided for an hour to watch her comedy. <laughs> I was just trying so hard just to, um, I don't know. I was just like, just want to like it. Try to understand what people thought were funny, you know? And then I was like, maybe there's something wrong with me because, you know, everybody or so many people think that she's funny. Maybe there's just maybe it's me and then like I'm just nah it's just she's not funny it's pandering to to a ma mass majority of people that probably don't even watch any other comedian you know it's just like the same people like listen 
I think he's been in funny movies, not credited so much to him, but more of the writers because I mean writing's one thing. Um, I don't even know. I don't even want to say take the, this credit from him. But what really turned me off was by um, his special on Netflix that came out last year, and I was just like, Who? "What the fuck?" Um, <clears throat> Kevin James. Oh yeah, you said you told me that he was just doing memes. Um, yeah, I don't know. You could memes, and he was replacing instead of saying vegan, he was saying lactose intolerance. Like, oh, we don't need to hear you t- talk about your lactose intolerance. We get it. Your lactose intolerance. Like, that's literally the vegan joke that has been on the internet for the past five years. And people go see him because they've seen him in Adam Sandler movies. You know? And I'm not shit on Adam, Adam Sandler. I think his movies are fucking hilarious. But Some um, of them. You know, for the most part. Dude, the Water Boy, the Water Boy is a classic. But some of his movies aren't yeah. that good. Like I tried to si- I tried to sit through adults or whatever that one was, where there were there were four friends and uh, you know, uh, grown ups. No, grown ups. Yeah, I tried they, to sit. They know that they know that he knows that that movie is shit. Like it's right. Even he will say, "Oh, that was a shitty movie." Um, then why would he do a sequel? To try to redeem himself? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm making it up. I know somebody shit on Grown Ups from that. that, uh, that Bro, movie. this is but. the thing. If you're an actor in Hollywood, you're going to wind up in a shitty movie no matter how good of an actor you are. Look at You know, you just, you have to ask the question. Has Anthony Hopkins been in shitty movies? Yeah. Morgan yeah. Freeman has been in shitty movies. So, I mean... You're gonna end up. Morgan in, Freeman has made shitty movies good. <laughs> well, I if there was one person I wanted narrating my life, it would be him or James Earl Jones. Yeah, who the fuck else wouldn't you know wouldn't agree with that? Maybe David Attenborough. That's a possibility. Oh yeah. Now here's Jay in his natural habitat. <laughs> his natural habitat, doing his podcast that nobody listens to. But. Uh, but dude, um, oh, did you watch the did you watch the presidential debate? Yeah, it wasn't as bad of a dumpster fire as the last one. Oh, I will say that whoever was moderating it deserves a fucking medal. And honestly, I, at the end of that, I was joking around. I was like, maybe she should run for fucking president. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's it. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we should all just vote for the moderator for president. But um Oh my god. But yeah, it was it was made abundantly clear that you're literally choosing the lesser of two evils in this election. D- depending on how you lean. And I, I don't I don't judge anybody for how you want to vote. I know I'm not voting for Biden because I, I just whether I vote third party or Trump, I don't know yet. I just and the reason I won't vote for Biden is I really think he's I think he's intellectually compromised. I really do think age has yeah. caught him. You know, he said so something is, last this night. Is the he, problem, the progression, the progression from the Trump administration is just it's it's not going to lead us anywhere. Like, so I I decided I was like starting to get um, a little bit not anxiety, but I was trying to get worrisome of like, oh, how am I going to vote? Should I get should I get a, a ballot and vote by mail and uh, or should I just Literally, the library is right down the street from me. I could go vote. And then I started thinking about it. I'm like, wait. I don't even know who I'm voting for. I was like, and then I started thinking about it. I was like, I don't want to vote for either one of these guys. I don't want to vote for either one of them either. And, like, there's so many people that shit on me because, like, oh, you need to go exercise your right. I go, no. It's not about just voting just because you can vote. I get it. There's fucking people in other countries that don't have the right to vote and you know because i have the right i should be using it but the problem is when you have these two guys on the ballot it's not going to do anything don't get me wrong i'll vote for a third party person last election i voted for uh, johnson yeah yeah i'll, I'll fucking say that straight out but i've actually believed in johnson i'm not just going to go vote for the, the the next libertarian candidate or or whatever independent candidate I'm not joe jorgensen just because yeah, I I wanted Johnson because uh, I was like, hey, this guy actually is a sensible dude. 
Um, well, that's why I wanted Tulsi Gabbard but, and Andrew Yang. Mm-hmm. It's like, what do you... But anyways, hold on, let me finish yeah. this statement. But basically, like, I know there's a lot of people that are just going to shit on me. And, like, uh, this is what it comes down to, is there's things from that Trump's point perspective that I agree with. There's things that are from uh, Biden's point of view or perspective that I agree with. So that's the thing, because that's where I fall right down the middle. But the problem is both of them are packaged in with these fucking radical ideas that just completely eliminate me feeling comfortable voting for either one of them. Dude, I I can sit like I'm not gonna vote for Trump because it's just like then that means that I, I agree to his fucking negligence when it comes to you know certain things. Or I'm not gonna yeah. vote for fucking <clears throat> Biden because then that means I agree with his fucking shitty tax rate. You know, like well, not even that, dude. He's complete. He's he he had the see. This is my prop. Yeah, this course. is my problem with the Democrats. I was just using one example. No, no, but, it, but this is a great this is a great thing to piggyback on. Here's my problem with the Democrats. The Green New Deal is not realistic. We are going to be using oil for the next hundred years. These electric vehicles in solar power is not as clean as everybody wants to think. First off, you're running into the physics problem of battery density. Second off, all these things use conflict minerals. Lithium, cobalt. So what are you going to do? Are you going to go into these African countries where most of it are... And strip mine the entire country. How is that good for the inhabitants of those countries? Because these these minerals are not found in the United States and China. They're the two countries are going at it over. That's why they're called conflict minerals. But are they natural resources in the sense that um, they can't be renewed? Can yeah. you make cobalt? Yeah, I don't know. I uh, just like you can make oil. That's what I'm saying. You're just going from one natural resource to the next, right? I mean, if I'm, if correct me if I'm wrong. No, I don't. We just think, oh, battery. We're not using gas, so it automatically means it's great. And it's just like, well, it's it's because people's minds only could think so far. They can only see as far as the ball can, you know. They can throw the ball, you know. Well, electric uh, vehicles would be clean if you ran them with a combination of nuclear power and electric vehicles. If you if you. Because modern, modern like fourth generation uh, power, and this is bro science here, but I, I read an article from a physicist who said, modern nu- the, the, the modern nuclear reactors that can be built produce virtually no radioactive material and cannot go critical. And he's saying this is the safest form of power that we can have. And as soon as you bring that up, Every time you bring that up, a liberal's head explodes that nuclear power is an actual viable alternative. And I, like, and when I say liberal, what I mean is this people on the super far left. I'm, I'm definitely center right. I know that. But, you know, I'm willing to vote for a Democrat. I voted for Barack Obama That's in 2012. I, I would have pinned you for, I would have pinned you for uh, center left. But... Well, that's what I get from people because it's, uh, this is the way I describe, I got this new joke where I say after, you know. When you I, talk to a Republican, they think you're li- liberal. And when, yeah. Well, this is my joke. <clears throat> Dude, we talk about the same, yeah. you know, this is why nobody listens to this podcast is yeah. because we say the same things over and over. I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about what, this is, there was, this is two people having a conversation. I haven't talked to you and like, no, but what I, the, the joke is, is. Well, if you think coming out as <clears throat> gay to your family is hard, try coming out as a social libertarian who's a fiscal conservative and a Second Amendment supporter. <laughs> you piss off both sides of your family right there. <laughs> but you you hit the nail right on the head with the oh your your conservative friends think you're liberal and your liberal friends think you're conservative. Yep. And it's just like that's exactly how it is with like honestly, I was, well, dude, uh, it's it's. It's, but, I, I keep saying to people, you cannot QE infinity. The only thing keeping the dollar alive right now is the fact that every other central bank in the world is printing their money into obscurity. And I'm like, oh, well, we want the Green New Deal. Okay, but who's paying for it? Well, rich people. 
okay, let me tell you how this works. Your 401k gets hit, and then that rich person that's paying higher taxes raises your rent. That's how that works. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what it, just because you think you, you can't... Look, this is the reality that a lot of people, when they talk about the progressive taxing, what they don't understand is this. You know, there's a comedian in Tampa. He was posting about this. If you don't understand the progressive tax system, you shouldn't be allowed to vote. Now, I haven't had a conversation with him, but I was I wanted to say in person, like, are you aware of this is how this works? Okay, you, you own a business, right? Let's just say you own a property. Okay, so what I do now as a business owner is say I need a new washer and dryer for the rental property. Well, I go and I put that new washer and dryer in and then I use that as a tax expense. So then I write that down and I just keep going down writing stuff down because these people have the smartest, best accountants. What happens is the taxes always come for you. It's always transferred to the middle class and poor. But that's, all right, dude, I, I, I'm glad that you are talking about this because this is the conversation that I had with a couple of my friends the other day. And it was just like, you know, they want to tax, they think that, oh, the 1% should you know, pay for they pay forty so per seven percent of the bills, anyways. I thought it was. I thought the first percent paid for fifty one percent. Or okay, maybe 1%. it's fifty one. I could be wrong. I mean, that was that was a couple of years ago. So yeah. I mean, but um, uh, what I wanted to excuse me. What I wanted to talk about with them was. What did you see? Fifty cents post about Biden's tax. Yeah, he right. had to pay sixty-two percent of his income. What's he yeah. getting for that? You and defunded and the he, police. He made a joke about it and stuff like that. And yeah. He's like, I don't want to be twenty cent. Yeah. Know? And um, like, so I was like sixty-two point five percent. I was just like, that's ridiculous. And I was trying to explain that. I was like to my friends, and like, you shouldn't have to worry about that because it's not you. You you should mind your own business. I was like, no, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. I'm like, you know, like. Does your friend have a 401k? Friend, listen, I'll just put it this way. I have a friend that med, went through med school, is in their residency. They started college when they were 18. They took a year off before med school. By the time they're done with their residency, all right, they're going to be. 30 something. I'm sorry, they're. Yeah, by the time they're done their residency, that's when you're finally going to be making good money. By the time they're done, they're going to be 35 years old. 34, 35 years old. Now think about that. It's what, 16 years? Mm -hmm. They're going through fucking school to become a doctor. Well, you'd make more money so as a plumber. Then you'd probably be making about $250,000. Yeah, a right? plumber makes about 100, 150, and they didn't accumulate $500,000 in what? debt. Also marrying another doctor. So there's a million dollars in debt. Doctor. All right. So now, and listen, your your um, student loans, they're not a write-off. The interest on the student loans are a write-off. So you're still paying your student loans that are fucking ridiculously high. So now you're finally making the money that you fucking waited 16 years, all right, to go through that you're probably in that tax bracket that you're going to be getting paid, uh, getting taxed at 62%. You're telling me that those people deserve to get 62% of their fucking money taken away because of, because, you know, what? So, they fucking took the sacrifices in order to become who they are? Yeah. You know, like, that's fucking complete bullshit. And guess what? What people don't understand is most people are just like, oh, the higher the tax bracket, higher the, the put more taxes in the higher tax bracket because uh, they deserve. They don't understand that their salary is different than our salary. Like when you work for a corporation, your salary, you have no deductibles. You're not deducting anything. The billionaires, the one percent, they're making their money because they have their own businesses. They have deductions. 
That's why Trump only paid seven hundred and fifty, if that's how much he even paid, because he well, didn't that's, actually release it. It's based that's off what journalism. that's what I was gonna talk that's what I was gonna talk to you about too, that I had to bring up with you. Now that you're making the money that you make, you need to start a limited liability company or an S corporation and then decide what your company does. It could be a hobby. So if you need to buy a new computer for your hobby, that's a business expense. You write it down. You and I go out for dinner mm -hmm. and we have a couple drinks. That's a business expense because you talk to me yeah, well, about the new bit. Right? You could you could say that I spoke with a consultant and then you take that to your accountant and you can just start writing things down and lowering your tax liability because you, my friend, now with the money you're paying are in the top tax bracket. <clears throat> that's what I think these people... Um, I already have my LLC, but that's because uh, now start uh, writing uh, stuff uh, down. Things. You, but, but you and I, you and I go, is, you and like, I go see another but, show. Listen, Jay. You listen, Jay. Somebody, li, li, listen. Someone maybe listening to this. Oh, yeah. Well, he's super fortunate to be doing that. Well, guess what? I'm living in a fucking apartment right now. I'm driving a fucking Honda Civic. You know? Yeah. Like I'm not living this fucking life, and I shouldn't. Like so, what? Just because I I sacrificed and made all the right decisions that I should be paying somebody else's fucking bills? No, that doesn't make sense. Well, that does I... not make sense. I made I made the decision like I made the decision to live the life that I live and took the sacrifices so that I can take care of myself. Yeah, you didn't go to you didn't not go to, to school for gender people. studies and run up student debt. You worked the entire time you were in school. To keep your debt low and you know that the the degree paid off for you so why are you see here's the problem that the, a lot of these people don't think about it's twofold if imagine if i walked up to you as an irs agent and i'm like okay so you're going to work today right essentially there's three points i want to make when you pay taxes you are working for the government for free Okay. Mm -hmm. The next point is if I walked up to you and I was like, Hey man, I know you just got home from work. Um, I need a dollar from you so that cops can go arrest a guy for smoking weed. If you actually had to give somebody a dollar, you would look at him and be like, I'm not fucking paying for that. Well, guess what? With taxes, you are, you're literally paying for people to go stop prostitutes from working because you know, the girl kind of needs $200 and the guy kind of needs a blow job. And it's, it's, it. so, I mean, you're paying for that. Your labor is paying for that, for that, for the government to enforce what is basically a moral code, right? That's what you're paying taxes on. Do you want to pay for that? And second, or another point is the government isn't going to run about, isn't going to be financially responsible with my money. And the third is, you're taxed twice. And this is what I don't understand. I look at people when they're talking about higher taxes. I'm like, do you have a 401k? And they're like, yeah. And then I say to them, I say to them, well, you know, you're taxed twice. And they go, what do you mean? I go, okay, so the corporation is taxed because everybody wants to raise, uh, raise taxes on corporations. So the corporations is taxed, taxed on their profits then I'm taxed if I sell my stock or I collect dividends. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, it's double taxation. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I look at people, and these are things I didn't understand when I was young, but then I was like, as I got older, I started looking into it, and I'm like, the fuck am I paying double taxation on this stuff for? For what? So the government can bomb That's third world countries we shouldn't be in? That's why there's a lot of uh, Republicans that believe in the flat tax. Or a consumption um, tax. If you really wanted, if you really wanted to, you know, you could do some sort of a flat tax and some sort of a consumption tax. So, you know, if you are out there buying gaudy shit like a yacht, you're taxed on it. You know, whereas you, as, I don't, well, they know your name. But nobody listens to this anyways. Whereas you as John isn't paying taxes is on that. Yeah. Bill, whatever. John Jacob Jingleheimer Smith. Yeah. But 
No, I, I mean, there are ways, there are ways, and it's like, isn't it, isn't it more fair to eliminate the deductions and just go with a flat tax? Isn't that more fair? Because right now, like you said, you get mad at Donald Trump, but he's just smart to do it. Everybody just wants to win the lottery. Well, yeah, we've talked about this, that the element of nobody wants to do the fucking work anymore. My boss asked me. But that's that's really what it is, man. And it's just like, like I understand. I was trying to, like, I understand there's people that need help. We all need help every once in a while. But there's no conservatives. More money there... And more money and more money at people that need help, they're never going to have an incentive to do better, right? So well, all I'm saying is, like, you know, we should be creating opportunities for people who need help. I'll give so you. That they don't need to use assistance for the long term instead of providing for them. John, right? I'll think give about you. all the people that win the lottery and, and go then they broke. go bankrupt. Yeah. If you cannot handle, if you cannot handle your expenses when you're broke, you're not going to be able to handle them when you're wealthy, right? So the more and more money, it's just that typical middle class perspective or middle and lower class um, uh, mentality of, oh, I got a hundred dollar raise. Oh, I I spend an extra hundred dollars. Yeah. Right. Instead of looking at so, it as a hundred you know, extra so dollars to just, save, we need to be given incentive for people to not need assistance, rather than viewing them as an entitlement. You know, you, you should be viewing as assistance as an entitlement. Are you talking and about saying, capitalism? Oh, well, we'll, just, we'll just tax the rich people even more. Are you talking about? Are you? Are you? Are you speaking positively about capitalism? Um, no, but like, come on, it's yeah. just. Like, it's just common sense. What do you think is going to happen to our country if everybody is on some sort of, like, you know, uh, assistance? And well, nobody's doing the hard work. Well, nobody, here's, here's, listen, it's that common analogy of the, there's going to be no cookies left if nobody's replenishing the cookie jar, right? Yeah, well, it, it, well here you go. Um, <laughs> my boss asked me <laughs> this week. He comes up to me and goes, you're the only dude that doesn't actually have to be at work, and yet you're the hardest, most dedicated worker. <laughs> he literally looked at me and said that. He goes, he goes, you show more dedication than any one of my other guys on in any other. And he told me, he's like, do you know that other supervisors want to steal you? And they specifically yeah, ask you're for you. The best jobs. Yeah, I'm the best at sucking <laughs> dick around there. But, um, yeah. so he asked me, he goes, getting your nose brown while you're at it, dude. He, he, <laughs> he looks at me and he goes, so why are you here? And I go, it's important to do something that sucks every day. And he's like, and I'm like, and I want to be a millionaire. I'm like, if I just work here till I'm, if I just work at this job currently and I save at the rate that I'm saving at, I'll be worth probably $4 million in retirement. And he goes, yeah, but you could be out enjoying yourself. I'm like, job's not that bad i'm in a lot of pain when i do it but like i said what it's important to do it? something that sucks every day and listen you're not living it you're not living a fucking episode of entourage so what out enjoying yourself with who by yourself yeah right you're gonna be bored yeah well, like if you had other friends that were living the same lifestyle with you and could just say, hey, I'm blowing off work. I'm going, I'm going to the Bahamas this weekend or fuck. We're, we're flying to the, the Europe is one thing. But the problem is there's going to be nobody else not working. Everybody else is working. So who well, are you going to go enjoy? Like you, you're going to get bored sitting by yourself at a fucking Marina or the beach for, if you're doing it for more than four days in a row, you know? Well, this is here's an example. Well here's an example of my problem with the super left because I wanted to bring this up too. You talk about LA and you talk about the homeless encampments and it's cruel to move them along. Well, how is allowing somebody to kill themselves with drugs and pass out on the street and live in abject poverty? How is that? How is that in any way, uh, you know, compassion? Uh, how is that compassion for the property owner that worked hard and did what they were supposed to do and now has a bunch of junkies camping outside their house lowering their property values? Where's the compassion for them? You know, it's... It, it, it's, a, it's, a, 
Yeah, it's it's for the people that I don't know, man. I am a, I am a fan uh, of universal basic income because I think that if you if, if, if with these people and I don't know, I could be proven wrong, but I think with these people, they're unproductive, they're not going to work anyways. Whatever it is you want to give them 500 bucks a month, at least they have some money so they're not stealing my shit to and I, and I would and when the tax man shows up, I, I'll gladly hand over some of that money. Steve's got schizophrenia over there. We can't fucking do anything productive with him. Let's monetize him so somebody can build some affordable housing for him and help him. Okay, I, I'm for well, that. Well, this is another thing. Like, you just, you, you brought up just, oh, yeah. I don't mind helping people out that need help. And I don't want it to seem like it does. But the problem is increasing the tax rates isn't going to do that because the thing is the government's not even using that money efficiently in the first place oh i agree like trump was under investigation for three and a half years is it or three years for some shit that didn't happen for we did who's paying for that we did exactly so that's the whole thing it's just like it's it's like oh we got this free money we can spend it however we want type of thing like well here you go here's one so here's one why is your tax money going to Wall Street corporations in the form of quantitative easing. Now, if you wanted to make a case that we need to keep small business owners like Oz alive, I'm more than happy with a stable job to add to the pot to keep him going if we have to do these stupid overblown uh, lockdowns and restrictions because I really, I'm not a conspiracy theorist on there, on here. I'm just telling you my point of view my point of view is the covid number of deaths it's inflated by a wide margin the average age of death is older than the average age of death so you wiped out mom and pop stores who are really honestly the economic engine that drives this country Uh, like so but you want more of my money that i worked for to give it to fucking wall street why so Stock prices go up so my money doesn't go as far. Like right now, we should be in a recession and you and I should be crushing it on our, our, our 401ks. Just the, the stock market should be depressed and we're just buying a shit ton of them because we know it's going to go up in the future. But instead, the Fed liquid pumped a whole bunch of liquidity into the system and now everything is outrageously expensive. I got to watch these dumb fucking YouTubers who don't realize that Microsoft stock is not going to be is not going to pay for itself for the next ten years because it's so overbought, which is fine. If you look, just just go on finance. That you, you Yahoo. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's actually a chocolate drink website mm-hmm. um, that also talks about stocks. But um, if you go on uh, just Yahoo Finance, right? I, I'm on there all day, uh, every day meter. at work. Yeah, that it's the meter. They show you the meter of whether something is overpriced or underpriced or right in the middle. Every stock I look at is overpriced right now. There's value. Every up. single fucking Yeah, but John. Stock. There is no, like, the whole thing is. Well, I, I'll, give ETFs, I'll give you two stocks. I'll give you two stocks right now. Bank of. Well, I, can tell, I already no. told you one stock that was, a uh, you know, it's actually, let me double check what was the name of that one but i already gained 80 percent on it what yeah but that scares me that you're gaining so quickly but what's the name of it infosys oh info systems yeah okay i didn't look into that but um bank of new york melon stock and bank of america are both undervalued bank stocks are down Mm. that's what you should be buying all right, hold on. I take that back. Infosys is technically overvalued right now, but it's not like you can't take that. Apple. You can't take that as a firm rating. You got to do further research. You got to look oh, at yeah. PAG ratio, intrinsic shit. ratio, and if you can find a spot, uh, somebody that does the discounted cash flows. So that means all the expected cash flows back to today. A, a good YouTuber is Sven Carlin. He's a PhD in finance. Sven? Yeah. He's a, he's a, so it's it's an earnings per share that you want that to be lower, right? Or no, higher. Come on, Jay, give us a lesson. 
Well, I don't usually typically use earnings per share. What I do is I let smarter people than me think for me. Like if I'm looking at a value stock, I try to find somebody on YouTube who has the actual education to make an informed opinion. So then I can drop. But one thing I do look at is PE ratio. For the most part, I'm not interested in anything over 20. That's the one I was looking at. That's, that's the value I was looking at. You can also do book okay, value. Okay. You can also do book value. But I stopped buying Alibaba stock. Because now it's at... Th- most of when I bought it was under 200. And its PE ratio was in the 20s. Which is low for a tech firm. So... You know, um, I still think Baba's undervalued. Yahoo Finance puts it at a 40% return. There was a Seeking Alpha article that was saying they expect it to be 480 by the end of 2021. And I actually agree with that. Because once you see the amount of money that the, that company is bringing in versus the price of a Shopify. And yes, if you're listening at home, I realize that Alibaba stock is really just a, a, an eight share limited holding company out of the uh, Cayman Islands, but that's how the stock works coming out of China. But um, <clears throat> I stopped buying it once it went, once it made its run, it's at, it was at 309, I checked it today. I'm up $1,500 on my position. I, I have 18 shares of it, but I mean. I got a one share of it when I bought at 210. Well, you made it good, dude. You made it. You can't be mad at that. You can't be mad. No, I'm not mad at that. But um, I'm not mad. I'm buying more stock, dude. I, what I, I'll I'll tell you what I I made a money a lot of money on was more of a Bitcoin fucking mining stocks. Yeah. Um, I mean they're super volatile, but when when Bitcoin goes up, they fucking go up like they double in price. But. See, here's 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 the problem. So, ideally, it's good for swing. Ideally, I would just I would just be buying stocks in the at a PE ratio of fifteen for the next twenty five years, and they wouldn't go up in value a dollar. I'd just be collecting dividends, and then they'd shoot up in value right before I went to retire. That's the ideal world. Like what what's going on now? My U.S. growth mutual fund index fund is up 48% on the year. People get excited about that, but the problem is now my money doesn't go as far. Because growth is so overbought, in my uh, in my Vanguard account, I'm switching my money out of the total stock market into the value index fund. Because I mean, mm-hmm. and the reason I'm doing that, is, and I switched my, um, my uh, TSP over to the S fund, which is small and mid caps. The reason I did that is A, they give a higher historical return. B, they're not overbought. Like every everybody's buying the ah, 60X your money on Tesla. Wait till you find out that the EV market is a huge bubble right now. You're all gonna find that out when it crashes, probably 2021, 2022. And then I'm going to turn around and buy all those stocks. Stop chasing gains is what I want to tell people. Oh, this is the hot stock. No, look at look at the moves IBM is making. IBM stock is depressed and it pays a five point something percent dividend. And now all the articles are coming out about how they think that IBM is t- turning itself around by spinning off and concentrating on uh, cloud computing. So IBM hasn't done anything for 15 years. But if it's suddenly, if IBM becomes the latest hot growth stock, imagine if you sat there patiently buying IBM. Huh? You have a bunch? I said I have one stock. No, just one here. Oh, you're not recording video, right? No. We're just on Audacity. But... That's just my shitty portfolio right now. Yeah, but that's not a bad portfolio. Why is that bad? That's all in your IRA, right? Oh, it's it's yeah. No, no. This is this is a brokerage. But I mean, for the most part, look at this. This is the column that is 
You should be buying. You should be buying red. Was reinvested. You should be buying red. Like, buy red. Don't buy green. Buy red. Yeah. Um, dude. No, I'm not buying that. These are things I've had for a while. Look at this: fifty-one percent, thirty-eight percent, forty percent, sixty-five percent, sixty-seven, fucking fifty-eight percent. Marathon. I don't even know what is Marathon Patent Group. Hey, you're up two hundred and seventy-six percent on it. That's nice. Yeah, that's bucks, but sixty-seven. But yeah, this this was up the three three point uh, three point five yesterday because Bitcoin was up. But that's a Bitcoin. Oh, these are these are Bitcoin, Bitcoin miners. A lot of these are Bitcoin. Uh, this one, I just, I just I bought it for so cheap. I'm not even gonna just let it go. It's just maybe that will Well bro, down. I'm about to do a, I'm about to do a pure speculative play. I'm dumping five hundred dollars into luck and coffee. It's a Chinese stock. Yeah. That that that, that yeah. went way down because of an accounting scandal. But China's a huge coffee drinker company. And over there, their version of Twitter, people are just talking about how they go there. And I'm like, you know, look, if you would have invested a thousand dollars in Amazon in 1997, dude, you'd be sitting on $1.9 million, something like that. Not saying that this coffee company is going to do that, but I mean, just on the off basis that I might, it's such a tiny position for me. It's like, why not have some fun? Maybe it, that'll turn into something great. Maybe it won't, but I'm willing to gamble, which is what I'm doing with that 600 bucks. Um, if Biden wins, this is what you want right here. Uh, give me a second. I gotta flush my eye out. All right, I'll pause this because I gotta go to the bathroom. I'm recording again. No, my, no, my fucking eye just gets super fucking itchy. What is this? Maybe what? It's the COVID. This probably is. You're probably dying. What is this company you're showing me? That's gonna take oh, off. Oh, it's a it's an ETF. Oh, uh, if Biden it's wins, an ETF. It's a it's a it's. MJ marijuana. Oh, oh, all right. Um, but my problem with, um, my problem with the whole weed thing that everybody seems to think that they're going to get on the bandwagon with is weed doesn't exactly work like that. So <clears throat> Walmart's going to end up selling weed and they have such a large economies of scale. It's going to be difficult to compete with them. Everybody's going to start selling yeah, weed. That's why when people are like, oh, I'm playing this company, Planet 13. Listen, I'm not telling you you're going to become a millionaire off this stock. Or, you know, it's, it's an ETF that's $11 right now. It's like, why not throw a fucking, you know, well, hundred bucks at it? Just because something is uh, not doesn't cost a lot doesn't mean... And I do like the fact that it's down 30.75%, right? That's... A good buy, but I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, you know what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to save my entire paycheck from work. So I'm going to max out my TSP and that's $19,000 a year. And that's mm. going to be in a, uh, a rock match. Huh? 4% matching. Match. Yeah. So that's going to start. Okay, so that's going to start. It's only 19% out of your pocket. No, nine, it's going to be $19,000 for the year that I have to put I'm sorry, $19,000 $19, out of your pocket is the limit. Yes, is the limit. I think it's 19500 so, so with a 4% match. Whatever. Yeah. So the company, if, you're, if somebody else, like a company is investing into your 401k, they could put up, like, it's like over double that, but that's... First of all, who the fuck, what company is matching that much? Does yours, um, do you have a matching? <laughs> yeah, my matching, my new company, the matching's horrible. But I'm not planning on really, uh, I'm not really planning on uh, front-loading my 401k because I'm going to start making some uh, real estate investments. Um, okay, but you should at least do um, whatever the matching is. Yeah, this is... Where I'm at. Yeah, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the matching. But the thing is it's not hundred percent vested. So Dude, where you're at at your age is fucking really good. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's Well did I'm I including Did I tell you I'm buying a house? 
Oh, well, you're in process? Or I'm in the process you, right now. Talking. I got this cute little, I got this, it's funny because the, they were like, what do you want? And I go, I don't want to pay more than $1,000 in mortgage. And I said, that's the criteria. So they got me this little two bedroom house in uh, four miles from here in Clearwater for um, 275. So I'm gonna start. You're not doing a duplex, huh? I couldn't get You're not one. Not doing duplex. I couldn't get one. Yeah. Every every duplex that I went after, they were like, "Oh, the owner wants to sell to the two tenants," and I'm like, "Fuck!" I was like, "What I really wanted was a duplex with one tenant or nobody in there, so I could live on one side and rent the other side out." But the VA home loans are sweetheart loans, so. I'm going to just live in this house. I already got some plans for it. Um, I'm going to rip up the carpets in the master bedroom and the guest room, put in hardwood floors, get some interior work done. I'm going to get storm windows put in. I'll probably add a pool at some point. You're putting nothing down? Uh, I have to put $8,000 in closing costs, but... Yeah, but I'm just gonna make up for the I'm just gonna make up for the no time down by extra payments every year, so I'm probably gonna do two extra payments. Gotcha. I'm just thinking. So, I mean, nobody knows what the fuck's gonna happen. I get paranoid about living in a house. Um. If I'm buying a house, living in it, I get paranoid about it because it's just like, all right, well, let's say that there's another crisis. Um, what, about the value drops? No, not even just that. Yeah, well, the, yeah, the value, and then you're like, all right, you're upside down in it, and then, um, like, no, I don't know. I'm it'll recover in the long run. I don't know run. if I'm going to be fucking working for somebody after three years, you know, like... Um, but the way that I look at it is if I buy a house in a time like this and I'm renting it out and there's a crisis, no matter what, there's always going to be somebody that's going to be able to afford to live in that house. Well, yeah, dude. I mean, you could, with the money you make, if you just said, okay, I'm buying a house solely as a rental, <clears> thousand dollars a month in mortgage, you could easily afford that. And if there was no, see, if you're going to start out doing that, what you want is you want to be able to pay the mortgage with nobody living in the house and it not be a burden. Yeah, That's yeah, how you start. You have to, you want, on average, you want to include like a 5% vacancy rate. Yeah. So. But yeah, if you're, Just if you're. always assume one month out of the year that you're going to, you're going to have to pay money out of the pocket. Just fine right. because you're investing it into something. You're not. It's not like you're spending. You're wasting a month, a month worth of rent. No, you're just putting it right back into your asset that is yours. But the rest of the year, you know. Well, that's the way I look at. I look. I looked at buying a house. Is that I'm actually paying myself instead of paying somebody else for a place to live. I'm paying myself. You know. So I mean, even if. But, I, I kept my mortgage at a point that even if I wasn't working, I could still pay for it. That's why I said I don't want to pay more yeah. than $1,000 a month, which I will well, because of have, insurance and shit, but... But listen, you, you essentially have passive income coming in. Why not get the fucking house? Yeah. Get the appreciating fucking asset. I have passive income. Yeah, I wouldn't really say the income I derive is passive because I pay for it in the form of pain. Yeah, I'm just saying currently it, it was an investment. Now it's technically passive. Mm -hmm. You know? Is But. Uh, first of all, I like your turtle. Nice turtle. And, you know where uh, I, I got like that turtle? On your, um, you know where I got that what? turtle? Where'd you get it? Germany. No, sure. 2004. Had a fair. Had a German girlfriend. Yeah. And she was always trying to steal it. She's like, I want your turtle. I'm like, you can't have turtle. <laughs> turtle. That turtle has been everywhere around the world with me. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Get off your phone. Sorry, somebody was just trying. Somebody was trying to tell, talk to me about uh, progressive and marginal tax tax rates. 
And like, uh, I was like, uh, yeah, I know what they are. So it was my friends, my liberal friends that, uh, the, the that I was what? talking about with the 65%. Thing. But did she's like, uh, I, listen, I just, I replied, LOL, I was an accounting minor. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah. Dude, I would love, dude, this is what I would love to do. The, the guy, the guy, my comedian, the comedian friend who posted on, uh, on Facebook about not understanding the tax rate. And I was going to, I wanted to just go, okay, why don't you explain to me what you think it is? Because, you know, you're taxed X percent. 10% or 15% on like the first 9,000. Then you're taxed X percent up to, I forget what the number is. We'll just say 40,000. Then you're taxed X percent after that. So it's like, you know, do you really understand it? I mean, what do you think it is? Like, like I would love an accounting well, major. How, how shitty. Remember when like uh, everybody got so upset when Mitt Romney didn't pay um, the percent of taxes at which the bracket he was in is because people didn't understand. First of all, yeah, he had money offshore. Um, was, yeah, I wasn't a big fan of that. Um, and I wasn't a, I'm not a big, yeah. do I, but, I don't blame, look, I don't blame Mitt Romney for using these loopholes, but shit like $75,000 for a horse thing needs to be out of there because that's not productive well, maybe it is. I don't know. Okay. Make an argument. No, I was just going to say that people want to get on their high horse and say, oh, you know, he did that. But there's so many people that are voting Democrat that are trying to fucking write off shit that, that they didn't even have. You know, oh, it's just like if, if you want to vote Democrat, there's, pay your fucking taxes because – Yeah, there's, like, there's hypocrisy all around. You know what I mean? I explained this. Yeah, but that's the whole thing. It's just like they – it's so easy to just point the finger and just be like, oh, no, you're the reason why we're fucked up. It's just like, do you realize just all those little things, they add up and add up and add up? So if everybody's taking advantage of the system, there's going to be no system anymore, you know? like. Well, dude, it's know. it's like this. Everybody has their hypocrisy. I'll throw this one out. I'm going to criticize righties so they don't so they don't think that I'm, I'm, I'm a complete, you know, far-right conservative. But it's like... When you talk about when the right the, the right talks about getting rid of abortion and I go, okay, well, here's who pays for that. The poor and the middle class because wealthy people will still get the abortion and it's mostly wealthy white women, you know? So it's like, it's like, what are we talking about here? Everybody needs to just sit down and shut up for a minute. You know, mm -hmm. David Hogue, <laughs> let's talk about the guns for in a second, you're not getting my AR-15. Your argument that the government is repressive and supports white supremacy, therefore the government should be the only people that have guns is the dumbest fucking argument I've ever heard. And I'm not bringing that. We, we've crushed the second amendment on here. We don't, but it's like, listen oh, to on. me, listen hold to on. my perspective for a minute instead of calling me an asshole and an amosexual Cause I like guns. I'm the guy. Ammo yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I want to, uh, the police, they're, they're uh, the police, they're evil. Well, Dave, last time I checked, it wasn't a bunch of feminine Harvard graduates that ran into towers that were burning on nine 11. It was a bunch of masculine alpha City males. In 1970. Yeah. And they go to New York City in 2015 and tell me which which one would you rather go to? Well, I prefer the <laughs> I prefer the grittier one where Rick Moranis gets punched like in Bill Burr's bit. <laughs> New York's back, baby. <laughs> that's a, that's a oh, New York yeah. City I want in New York City with Edge. But no, I get your Dude, point. That bit, that bit was so good. Because it was so bad, <laughs> like in the sense that, like, people, like people, were like, oh, this is SNL, and one, you could tell he's a little rusty, and also he was just like this plowing a hat. <laughs> I love, but he, yeah, but he kept on going, and it, it just to me, didn't Whitney fucking post something that was hilarious about it? Um, I don't know. Hold on. Oh. going back, there was something that you said I wanted to talk about. Oh my God, Jay! Dude, I was about to interrupt dude, you hold on, because hold I knew on. I was gonna forget. This no. is why I interrupt. 
No, this is why I'm interrupting you because I'll forget it. Did stand up with a professional from LA. We started chatting. He told me Whitney Cummings steals jokes. Ah. And I said, really? Listen. And he goes, I go, but was it like parallel thinking? Because. Or is it straight up fucking Carlos Mencia shit? He said it was straight up Carlos Mencia stuff. What are you doing now? I'm stretching, man. I got to fucking get my stretches in. You touch my toes a little bit, you know. Dude, but. Um, fuck. I, you know, this is Hold what. On. There was something. You're, you said something about New York. Before New York. Before. Uh, oh, no. Cops. Um. No, it wasn't a bunch of it wasn't a bunch of feminine Harvard attendees that ran into the towers on nine eleven. It was before cops. It was the topic right before to- cops. Uh, Jesus, I sh- I, this is why I need a pen and paper to write down because my fucking ADD is just too bad, dude. Uh, uh. But God damn it, Jay! Here you go. What were we talking about before we said something about cops? I was talking about the Second Amendment, and we crushed the Second Amendment on here. Oh, and then uh, there was something before that. I'm drinking, dude. It was around... Oh, my God, it was right at that fucking moment. Can we rewind this? We gotta rewind it. (laughs) It was right at that moment, because I was about to say something, like, oh, we already crushed the Second Amendment. I was like, that's not what I was going to speak on. And then he brought up cops, and then my, my fucking... My mind just went like, oh, meh, meh. <laughs> like <laughs> I don't know. Oh my god! But when but Bill Burr's bit on John Wayne, I had basically written down the exact same thing, and I was like, sweet. If I come up with one, we jo- talked about that. Yeah, I was like, he was born talk- in the I early 1900s. Look, go, back to, go back to a previous fucking podcast because i know for sure i was like dude the guy already died what else can you do to him yeah pretty much <laughs> it's yeah well we're, we're gonna cancel john wayne god did that 40 years ago that was such a great line yeah oh my god yeah he had some good good ones dude well dude dude this is what it, this is what a comedian here said to me and i like the guy so i'm not going to mention his name but he said to me when I was describing Bill Burr's bit, he goes, you know, dude, I'm sure it was funny because Burr's funny, but we don't really need a cis white male commenting on that. And I'm like, I like you, man, but I've never wanted to throat punch you so hard. And I've, I've, like, I, I'm literally picturing doing a spinning back kick to your throat. Whatever you say is just, it doesn't count. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> like, I, just, I can't have an opinion. No. But, I mean, it's like... You don't you don't have a brain or anything and can use logic or anything. But, no. Well, listen, I, listen yeah. I'm the most accepting. I'm extremely accepting. Like, if you... All right, Trump. Yeah, that's what I thought when I said that, when that came out of my mouth. I was about to be. Yeah, I was like, "Fuck!" I just trapped myself into. I am the least racist person in this room. Like, if you have to say you're the least racist person in the room, you're probably racist. But no, I'm. Extre- I can't see the audience right now. What are you gonna point out somebody that? Oh wait, maybe that person's a little bit less racist than I am. Like, what was the point of saying that? I don't know, dude. It's the it's it's the it's the spectacle of two seventy year almost eighty year old men are vying for. I'm gonna punch that through the screen and punch that phone out of your hand. I'm I'm sending you something fucking hilarious oh, right now, all right, okay. and you're gonna fucking appreciate it. But um, no, and it's, you still have your Instagram. Yeah, the gram, even though yeah, I don't post do. on it. Yeah, I, I, maybe you should get on that shit. Maybe people would be listening to this fucking podcast right now, Jay, if you fucking posted nobody, on Instagram. Nobody you wants understand that's where you're going to get followers. The, nobody wants nobody wants to hear 
my opinions on shit. Things I don't understand. Yeah, you sure? Wind. <laughs> you sure? Kevin James has followers. <laughs> Amy Schumer's got followers. At least, at least Kevin James. I didn't personally think King of Queens was funny, but at least, I mean, at least he was on. He, you, Kevin James. If I watched that show, it's because I thought Leia. Rem, Rain, she was Leia, fucking hot, right? Remy was, yeah, yeah. It, dude, you know that what? Bronx voice too, though. I don't know what. It, <laughs> dude, there's, dude. You can tell me I'm wrong. And, I, and I'm just going to tell you that's the way. But there is something to me about that Boston accent or a fucking girl with a New York accent who's just kind of a Marissa bitch. Tomei oh, Marissa Tomei. Oh, Marissa Tomei. Oh, my God. She's so... Dude, Marissa Tomei in My Cousin Vinny is one of the hottest women that yeah. has ever lived. Because you know you can fight with her, but she doesn't really mean it. And you'll both be laughing by the end of it because you can just argue ridiculous shit with each other. Dude, her at... Oh, dude, Marissa Tomei. Oh, she's yeah. she's a young Marissa Tomei. Even now that she's in her 50s... Old Marissa Tomei. Is, like, yeah. Dude, did you watch... Was it Spider-Man? Or, or even the King of Staten Island? Oh, I was oh like, God. dude, she's hot. She's hot. Did you see King of Staten Island? No, I didn't. But I saw the I saw the trailer. And you know what the great thing about her is? Is that Marissa Tomei it's might hot. Yeah, well besides being <laughs> besides being fucking smoking hot and older, dude Marissa Tomei might date a guy my age. Whereas like Kate Beckinsale, she only takes like twenty year old dick. I can't keep up with that, dude. I don't <laughs> I, I say go, girl. I'm like, you're getting hey, slammed Kate, up. <laughs> Kate Beckinsale is one of the hottest women that's ever oh, lived. Shit, I'm not in my 20s anymore. Never mind. Sorry, Kate. I, yeah, yeah, you, dude, you're too old, dude. You hit the fucking 3 out, bro. You ain't getting in anywhere near that. Oh, but, oh, I it's forget, like, man. I forget. dude, there's certain women, there's certain women that you, you, you're like, wait a second, J-Lo and Halle Berry are in their 50s? Did you see the? Did you see the? Inst, did you see the Instagram oh, I, oh, wait. of 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 Halle Berry skateboarding in a bikini? It's, I saw that. It's one I of the most. Just, it's one of the I'm most. Just gonna rewind it back. I'm, it's one I'm of the most. Rewind, what, rewind it back to the Super Bowl. It's one of the most beautiful things that a man can see is Halle Berry on that skate I with her fucking about this with her fucking with her fucking just, beautiful like copper skin in the sun. She's so hot. It's. She's so hot. It's stupid. She's like... She's you don't like, even care that she ran over a kid and paid for it? No. I don't <laughs> give a fuck. She could have... Dude, she could have fucking committed genocide on the Uyghurs with the help of China, and I would still not care. J-Lo... What if she was Hitler? I wouldn't <laughs> care. We'd be living she, a different... <laughs> yeah, she could have that little mustache... She could be, she could be killing. She could be committing, actively committing the Holocaust, and I could be getting interviewed after it's over, and they'd be like, "Did you say anything to her?" I'd be like, "She could have been that bad." I, I would have been like, I would be like, "Well, have you seen her? Do you really think that it's feasible for a man that looks like me to be with genetics that perfect?" So uh, yeah, I looked past the little genocide, dude. Oh, my love of Holly Berry goes back to when I, when I, the 12 or 13 years old, Eddie Murphy is my favorite actor growing up because of, uh, he's amazing. Like coming to America and Harlem Nights and shit. Uh, Halle Berry and Boomerang, dude. Halle Berry and Boomerang. That's when I fell in love with Halle Berry. Um, I was what? Huh? Well, Swordfish is what, like 99, 2001? Who doesn't care? That's, that, who cares? That's prime Halle Berry. Yeah, hold up. 2001. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Die Another Day. Oh, when she comes out of the ocean? Yeah. Yeah, how, how dude, that's just like a, the typical, like, I don't want to say cliche, or there's just a, I, that's an iconic scene. But, um, Dude, I'm telling you, like, all right, we talked, you just, you brought up J-Lo, and I'm just, all I'm saying is the Super Bowl. I don't uh, watch football, dude. As much as, uh, J-Lo, like. I might I watch have, it for J-Lo. Shakira, dude, Shakira, 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 
Oh, I, I love Shakira. Shakira is my girl. But when J Lo was standing next to her, I was like, "Wow, J Lo is looking even better than Shakira." Right. I, I, I actually, I, I, it's like it hurts me saying that because Shakira is my girl, dude. But Jesus Christ, that's not just how good J Lo is. Like at fifty years old, Jesus. Yeah, d- dude, you didn't have that shit forty years ago. Forty years ago, it was the rare cougar. That was a rare breed. Now we're just fucking overrun with cougars. Not that it's a oh, bad oh, thing. Oh, dude. It's not a bad it's thing. Because of money. <laughs> oh yeah, but no. Also, there's an element of superior genetics, dude. There really is. I think J Lo with. Yeah, I think J Lo. I think J Lo in all reality could be uh, in a middle-class family and she just works out and watches what she eats and she'd still be gorgeous. Yeah, dude. I know Shakira's hot. I don't need... Oh, God. (laughs) She's such a tiny little thing, too. Oh, no, go back to the one with the guitar. Don't lie, dude. Her hips... Bro, go. that is fucking sexier than any other picture. Her just destroying that guitar. Yeah. Dude, that's so... And her hair's all frizzy. Oh, yeah. That's the hair, dude. That's it. That crazy hair. Yeah, dude. Sold. Yeah. Uh, Look, I... What's his name? PK? PK is married to her? I don't know who that dude is. The fucking... He's a lucky guy. He's a... He's the, um... He plays for international uh, Spain team. He's a lucky dude. Is that her husband? Not the old guy, the other guy. Uh, uh, hold on, for some reason this is all fucking up. Here we go. The husband is usually over here. Partners. What the fuck? Dude, you know she'd fucking swear. Dude, that's the thing that's that's the thing that's awesome about uh, Latino women, they get mad at you and fight with you and yell at you in Spanish, and it's fucking sexy. Like, you didn't take the garbage out or do the shit that she asked you to do, so she starts swearing at you in uh, in Spanish, and you don't <laughs> understand it, but you still think it's hot. Oh, here we go. Gerard Pique. <sighs> Bro. You know what I've been on? Listen, hear me out on this. What you been on? It's 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 gonna be it's it it's gonna. So I was drunk the other night, and so I was jamming with tunes, but I was writing and I wasn't really paying attention. And for some reason, Irina Cara's um, "What a Feeling" came on, and that's from Flashdance. Yeah. yeah. Now. I want you to type in young Jennifer Beals and hit image. Oh, Jennifer Beal? Yeah, Jennifer Beal. Oh, okay. God, hell. Oh, that's it. That's it, where she's riding the skateboard right there. <laughs> she's so fucking sexy. She's so hot. It's stupid. But Oh, Jennifer Beals? Yeah. yeah, dude, right? Now go, oh, look at her right down. Look at her right down with her curly hair with the... Uh, over to the right, curly hair in the black and oh, dude, how hot yeah, is she? Yeah. How good looking is she? She's like, I'll give you. Uh, I think she's in her fifties when she did Book of Eli. And dude, she's so she, hot she in that movie. Book of Eli. That's the one with Denzel Washington, where he's the blind dude, yeah, but I you don't know he's I the blind that. dude. I love that movie, even though I'm not a religious guy. I I love the I I love that that movie. And then there was like, what? Well, you just memorized the whole fucking book, dude. Oh, I just ruined it for everybody, all the people that are listening. Well, oh, dude, look at her in the bikini down there, dude. You know that we're gonna get canceled for objectifying women after this, right? Oh, we're not. We're just we're appreciating their beauty. Come on, dude. I mean, I would definitely stick my tongue in her ass. And now we're canceled. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. That's what I was going for. Like, excuse me, sir. 
Um, on your shitty, stupid podcast that nobody listens to, did you just talk about tonguing Jennifer Beals' ass? Like, yeah, I did. No, I, I completely would. Yeah, but then, what do you want to talk about? Another Beal. Huh? Oh, Jessica Beal. Uh, Jessica Beal's beautiful, too. Hey, bring up... No, dude, we looked at Halle Berry. Let's talk about Cougars. Bring up... I want to see... I want to see uh, Marissa Tomei. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I was already typing. Yeah, right? Dude, look at her. <laughs> She's still so fucking hot. It's stupid. What? She's cute. Yeah, she you know, she that's... remains cute. No, but she's like this ageless cutie pie. Oh, dude, she's more than cute there. <laughs> you know who else I love? Yeah, man. You know who else I love? Sandra oh, Bullock. Here we go. Sandra the Bullock. Logical clock is ticking. Yeah, I just watched uh, Twenty One Days with her the other day. No, but you're right. She might. Marissa Tomei in My Cousin Vinny is one of the most enchanting creatures that's ever lived. I think Sandra Bullock's good looking, but there's just something about her where, like. <sighs> Look, brother, I we're not all going to always. We're not all going to always yeah, agree. You know what I'm I mean? Saying, like, like, she's a good looking girl, but there's certain, there's certain people that, you know, like you're just like, oh my God. Like, that's the thing. Shakira? Shakira's got my heart, dude. That's it. That's She's not... just like, yo, John, I'm leaving PK, and uh, I don't care. I'm 20-something years older than you, and... Shakira's not I that want, much older I than have you. have your babies. I'm like, yeah, what am I going to say? No. Shakira's only, like, 40. <laughs> no, she's... Shakira is... She's... I thought she was 50. No, Shakira's not 50. Shakira's, like, uh, 40. 77. What year are you... She's a year older than me, so she's 43. Okay, 43. Oh, okay, and I still got a chance. <laughs> yeah, I know, because Kate Beckinsale's not going to date you because you're way too fucking old for her. Dude, Kate uh, Beckinsale. Kate. Uh, oh, my God. She is so good looking. Oh, right there. No, the one in the white above. Uh, To the right. Dude. Oh, dude, that's her with, like, barely any makeup on. She's, dude, when you watch uh, Pearl Harbor, she's so good looking. I wouldn't even care that she fucked my buddy. <laughs> it's right. We could get over this. <laughs> I don't even care. She's so hot, she could persuade me to help her raise her kid by another dude that she got pregnant by while she was dating me. <laughs> Sorry. It doesn't look anything like me. It's sorry, okay. sorry, Jay. I fucked a trucker. Uh, uh, I guess I'll look past it. You know what I mean. We only get one go through. We all make mistakes, dude. Yeah, she's oh, she's she's definitely one of my tops. Even though it's hopeless because I'm similar in age to her. She'd look at me. She'd take one look. Kate Beckinsale would take one look at me and go. You have gray in your beard? That is disgusting. <laughs> this is probably my biggest celebrity uh, crush. Oh, the chick from Entourage? Sloan, yeah. Oh, dude, no. Yeah, you're 100% right on that. She Isn't she Israeli? I think she is. Dude. Ellen. The Jews are producing a lot of She's beautiful from women. Ontario, but I'm pretty sure she is a. She is. On, let's see. Moroccan Jewish. That's it. Oh, dude, she saw. Yo, oh, dude, I loved. Yeah, Sloan. That's a, a a good choice. That woman is. How old is she? Forty four. You know who else? Yes, forty five. You know who 45. else? You know who else? Wonder who? Woman, dude. Gal Gadot. Oh, she was in Entourage, too. That's her first appearance in any movie. Dude. Uh, she was in the limo with a... Hold on. Let's just appreciate Sloan a little bit more. I'm not... I'm, dude, I'm not opposed to appreciating Sloan at all. <laughs> we can't change the topic that quick. 
you know. I'm honestly her her character though Sloane. I, I think her character was just great. Was like uh, typical. I don't know. Maybe I just felt like she was so good looking. No, because I've seen her in other movies where I was just like, oh yeah, whatever. But there was something about her character as Sloane where it made her even more attractive. Just like Versa Tomei in uh in um. Well, yeah, in, uh, obviously. I, obviously, if you're a smart, nice person, you're automatically more attractive than your physical appearance. You know, nobody wants your to be with an asshole. Oh, God, right there, yeah. that smile. Mm -hmm. There's And there's a thing I like about her is if you go back and you look at that picture, there's, there's mischief in that smile. You could get up to mischief oh, yeah. with her. <laughs> no, I like that. There's... there's there's innocence and mischief at the same time. Yeah, dude. Right, <laughs> right there. There, you can see it in that look. That's like innocence, but yeah. she's like, you know, you can do fucked up shit with her and say fucked up shit, and but she'll I'll laugh. Your car. Yeah, 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 yeah. But she, yeah, she might kick your ass if you get if you're cheating on her. But God, she's Some so hot. <laughs> she's so hot. Oh my God. Staring at women, I'm never gonna. Bro, look. look, look at this. I'm clicking on this picture, right? And it's coming up with a different picture. Probably because, probably because Sloan is so hot that it's confusing Google. Right there, dude. Yeah. Oh. Oh my god. All right, who were we about to bring up? <laughs> Gal Gadot. Oh my god, with the leather jacket on. And she's got. <laughs> She dude, she's got that she's got that super hot mocha complexion too. Oh, Gala got it, right? Gal Gadot. Gadot. Gadot got it. Oh, yeah. dude. I don't know, man. I You cannot I'm not saying she's ugly. I still look, think I think she's great looking, but you know. I'm not it's, arguing it's you like with I said. I'm not arguing with you if she's you think. She's like another Sandra Bullock to me, where she's like, I think she's beautiful, but you, you know, cannot, just like, you cannot like, honestly, you cannot honestly make an argument that she is not one of the most beautiful women on the planet. Um, I'm not saying she's the most beautiful, but dude, come on, mm -hmm. especially when she's dressed up like Wonder Woman. I think she's got. All right. How about That's her with no makeup on. Go back. Go back. When she was doing that stupid yeah. thing where she sang um, Imagine. That's her when she wakes up in the morning. And that is an enchanting creature and right she there. She looks better here than she does with makeup. And She's I, that hot, I, dude. I'm the type of person. That's but what you that's want. The thing. Like I'm the type of person I'm attracted. Right there, to women dude. Look at wear. look at look at that beautiful fucking doe-eyed angel right there. Sloane's got my heart. Well, I'm not blaming you for liking <laughs> Sloane more. I mean, it's really like it's really like if women she are listening. Right if women are li if there's any woman, if hold on, if there's any woman listening to the podcast right now. This literally is as subjective as arguing who's better looking, Jason Momoa or Chris Helmsworth. I'm going to throw it on with Jason Momoa is better looking because he's got that scar over his eye. So, you know, like he's got a little bit of danger to him. You don't need to pull up Jason Momoa. I already know he's way better looking than me. <laughs> you know who's not that, like... Oh, Gal Gadot, dude. I think, um, uh, let's see. I feel like in the show, they made her look so much better looking than she is in real life. She's cute. You want, you looking? Yeah, she's cute. I'm not cute. saying she's ugly, but I'm just saying, like, there's something about her, her character, or whatever it was in in uh, Game of Thrones where she was really good looking. But, Dude. Like, I mean, this is all Photoshop too. Okay, but I'm going to point you know, this. Like, this, is, this is Photoshop. This yeah. is Photoshop. Yeah. This is. Okay, I see what you're saying. We won't mention names here. Oh, she looks good there. Well, we already said, we already said a, a show. Oh, yeah, so that just, 
yeah, that completely narrows it down. There's no possibility that we could be talking about the a Game of Thrones actress. You still don't know who we're talking about. You know, <laughs> hold on. You know who I like from Game of Thrones? I thought that she... She's... Uh, not here. That, that's just... But here? Yeah. Lena Headey. They made oh, her... Oh, oh, hold on. oh, oh. I know. Lena, Lena, Lena uh, Hetty, they made less good looking. They made they they purposely made her less good looking because <laughs> Cersei lo- loses her looks. Yeah, they made her look like Hillary Clinton. <laughs> um I forget her name. Um In Game of Thrones, the black girl. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, dude, Rose, Le- I like Rose Leslie. So I'm going to say this about her. I'm going to say this about her. But the girl from the... Hold on, hold on. Let me just do Rose Leslie real quick because that's Kit Harrington's wife. I don't want him to hear my podcast and kick my ass. Rose Leslie is beautiful, but her personality in that show takes her above is this fiery redhead that'll headbutt you. There's something so sexy about that that it's ridiculous. I think that's what it was. Like, I mean, if you look at some of these, like, she's still great looking, but, you yeah, know, yeah like, she's not, in, it, it, in this show. yeah, in, like, like I've said, personality counts for a lot. I'd rather be with a fucking six, you know, who's just an in-shape average looking girl who's fun to be with than a fucking 10 yeah, that's a she, bitch. She looks like Emma Stone there. Oh, dude, I love Emma Stone. But no, pull yeah, up Emma the- Stone, I think- Pull up, pull up, pull up the, no, pull up the. Yeah, what's her face? Oh, dude, no, I love Emma Stone. I think she's so hot. But uh, pull what's up. Her name? She's from a uh, Fast and Furious. Yeah, I don't. Just type in helper girl from Game of Thrones. Yeah. Uh... Girl that gets executed. <laughs> There you go. There yeah, you go. dude. Yeah, dude. She's a smoke show. Yeah, she's yeah. so good looking. It's ridiculous. I think, honestly, I, I would say... Look at her right there. Go back. The go, go back. Go back. Right there where she's in that white shirt. Tell me you don't want to crawl into bed with that every night. You can't. Oh, no. I, honestly, I'll tell you right now, I think she was... Once she was introduced to the show, I was like, all right, she puts Khaleesi to shame. She put. I per, I totally forgot about fucking the redhead chick <laughs> when she when she when they introduced her. That was it. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, what's her name? Rose. Yeah, it. I think it's a toss up between her and the witch girl, Melisandre. The witch girl. Melisandre. Oh, uh, Melisandre. She was, but she was older. You know, like she was a. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at a you looking at a girl in her prime there. She's so oh, like we, and she's got like she's got like big hair on that like framing her face. She's yeah, she's gorgeous, dude. There we go. Yeah, yeah she's beautiful. I, I don't know about you, but I some on on some women with that uh the was it sep, uh, septum. Yeah, I'm not a fan, but with her, I'm gonna let her go because she's that hot. Look at that! I love her big. I love her like big afro hair too. I'm gonna get. Yeah, let's just say her hair. It's dude, just like a, you know this is right here. Right. No, because there's different type. Like I love like like straight red. Well, th- what I'm saying there is go back. Okay, so in that picture, she's got her hair is more subdued. I'm saying go where she's got the blowout. That's the one I like. White supremacist dude said, white supremacist looking guy on podcast says that he loves when black girls have blown out hair. Canceled. No, dude, she's, she's so good looking. I would, uh, I, dude, I would love to wake up next to a woman that looked like that in the morning. All right. So are we doing the, uh, fuck, Mary kill? <laughs> That we could three, because I, I know we're boring I know we're boring the zero listeners right now we're, so uh, we're gonna have to <laughs> we're gonna have to turn this into a game okay hold on I gotta take a piss so we'll pause this real quick and we'll play fuck Mary kill.
Okay, we're recording again. All right, so like, all right. So what's round one? Okay. Sloan, Marissa Tomei, and I'm gonna butcher your name. Was it Natalie Emmanuel? Who? Wait, who? Oh, it's her. Dude, you're making this really hard for me, man. Oh yeah. Why that's can't it be exactly like? Why can't it be right like right. Sloan? Um, it's Sloan. Then you know this girl, and then Hillary Clinton. Um, because that would be too easy. <sighs> okay. I mean, even with her straight hair. Look, even with her straight hair. I, I still think she looks better with the. I think she looks better with yeah, right there the with the, like with the yeah. the thick blowout. Mm. Oh, this is so hard. Wait, what are my choices again? Sloan, her, or Marissa Tomei. God damn it. Hold up, hold up. This is an impossible yeah. game with these three. Just with their hair up like that, the jawline, and the red lipstick. She's a beautiful woman, man. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. All right. I'm going to fuck Sloan, marry Marissa Tomei, and then I'm going to have <laughs> the girl from Game of Thrones burned up by a dragon just because it's ironic. So that's my fuck. <laughs> oh, I don't even know. Go back to that picture, though, with her right there. Oh, dude. Oh, right there. She's so hot. What an enchanting woman. But that's why... Given the three... Get, given the same three? Yeah. Uh, I, I would have to marry Sloan. Yeah, because you're in love with her. That's no, wait. Mean. I don't know, though, because Marissa Tomei, it's like... I'm, I'm taking... I'm taking... I'm taking... I'm taking my cousin Vinny, Marissa Tomei. She's got that yeah. hard so that, New that York probably, City accent. At the same time, against Sloan... It's hard. It's hard, dude. It's hard. And I'm, I'm marrying Sloan. You're marrying Sloan? Sloan's just... Yeah. What are you, are you going to kill Marissa Tomei just to hear her swear at you as you're killing that, her? But I can't <laughs> <laughs> so, Just to hear her fucking screaming at you with your hands around her neck. Like, you goddamn motherfucker, yeah. put your hands on me. You might have a tough time killing that Marissa Tomei. Yeah, no. I, honestly, I, I love Marissa, but I, I think I don't think Marissa's gonna have to be killed. Marissa's gonna get killed. Yeah. So you're yeah, gonna man. fuck Game of Thrones, girl? Because this is the this is the thing. I'm not gonna be able to live with myself if I marry Marissa and she dies like ten years before me. No, this is prime <laughs> Marissa Tomei, my cousin Vinny Marissa Tomei. That's oh the God. one I'm marrying. I'm marrying yeah. Marissa so Tomei you know, in her right, prime. Right. Because of her personality, I could fight with her all day long, and it's fun fighting. Nah, it's I not still, real still, fighting. Sloan gets. Sloan I'm not. Sloan I'm not hating ring, on that man. choice. Sloan gets the ring. I, I'm. I'm not hating on that choice. That was one of the, probably. That was probably the most difficult fuck Mary kill that's ever been done. You know, <laughs> and I took a loophole on it because I I killed her solely because it reenacted right. Game of Thrones, and that's acceptable. Oh, is my cam oh, my camera's off. Um, I because we're still looking at this. All right, ready for this? Ready? Yeah. Round two. Okay. Halle Berry. Shakira. I know, I just had somebody else in my mind, and I can't remember who it was. Hold up. I, should I shouldn't have left that out before I remembered who the third person was. Probably. You ruined the entire podcast. Yeah. Um, that's it, guys. Turn this off, even though it was off already. <laughs> We've already been canceled four times. Yeah. Oh, wait, hold up. Oh, she looks so good there. Dude, look at, she's got that, she's got fucking a, a tan too. So she's got like, again, that mocha skin, dude. It's the most attractive human oh. feature. It's like the perfect right, human feature. It? Go ahead. I remember who the third person was. So it was... Is it Ellie Rose? Like the girl from uh, the redhead. From 
from Game of Thrones. Oh, easy. Right. This one's easy. Ali Barry and Shakira. Yeah, I think it's easy. When this it's one. Right in there. This one's this one's easy. Um, I'm gonna marry Halle Berry. I'm gonna fuck Shakira, and I'm gonna kill Rose Leslie. And that's not be, an insult to her for this reason. Because I just think that she would result in honorable combat. Like, I think she's so tough, it would be honorable to kill her. Like, it, it would result in a fight. Like, we would go out and we would have... She might even kill me in this contest. We would go out and it would be like daggers at dawn. That's how that's going down. So, you're basically going to have a duel with her. So yeah. You're getting it. Yeah, just because she, <laughs> just because of the character she played in Game of Thrones is so fierce. I'd be like... This bitch might kill me. <laughs> I'm marrying Halle Berry, dude. I yeah. got a thing. I told you, I have a thing for Halle Berry. You can't be 12 I, years I old. I reverse with... I, you, hold on. You can't be I, 12 years old and watch Boomerang and then not have a crush on Halle Berry for the rest of my rest of your life. It's not possible. Hold on. Uh, right. Okay. Right. Click on that first picture. Okay. Yeah. That that's that's the Holly Berry that uh Dude d- Yeah. As I'm Flintstones. marrying that. Flintstones. But I'm i I'm sorry, man. I think uh Shakira. Yeah, I mean we have our biases. You know what it is though? You know what it is? I'm going to tell you. It's generations. Yeah, because I'm like, because, wait, are you 30 or 31? You're 10 years older than me. Yeah. And, and like, and so, like, Shakira is to you what Halle Berry is to me. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Because I was, like, 12 or 13. You know, when you were introduced to her, you were just like, oh, my God. (laughs) <laughs> it's, you're at that age you're, dude, old, you're we, all crazy you're like oh yeah that's it she's the love of my life dude like, try yeah. try having those hormones start hitting you and then have Halle Berry walk on the screen you don't even know what's happening to you at that age you're like what yeah. is well, that's... hold on let me think uh... you're like what is this you're like finally you're looking at you're like they're, they're women that look like that <laughs> that's what I was saying like I remember watching this movie and I was like oh yeah alright what's the next round alright we gotta think of three more it's not that hard there's a lot of beautiful women you could go Kate Beckinsale Gal Gadot and uh, Jennifer I Beals Jennifer Beals there you go yeah my computer's freezing up for some reason. Because it's stupid. It is. Oh, damn it. Oh, there we go. Okay. Jennifer Beals. Okay. All right. What about another 80s chick? Um... Uh, no. Jennifer Gray's hot, even with the nose. Yeah. I don't care what anybody says. There could be unconventional features about somebody that makes... Oh, wait. Hold up. I got... Um... Alright. I'm talking, like, 80s. Okay. Like, uh, flash dance... Not flash dance, uh, strip strip tease, right? That's nineties, bro. That was nineties, yeah. What was it? What else was she in before that? Oh, she was in a lot of shit, like she same almost fire. Yeah, Demi she, Moore is beautiful, dude. Uh, she has short hair, isn't it? She still looks good with short hair. <laughs> this is the episode of Friends, <laughs> right? All right, who are we doing, man? Because this is dead air time. I don't know, man. It's your your turn. I came up with the last two. Okay. Um. 
What did we say? All right, we'll go 80s. Right, we can throw Emma Stone in there. Oh, yeah, dude. Against who? Her eyes, man. Oh, yeah. Um, I would let that girl take a dump on my chest. She's that hot. <laughs> All right, Odell. <laughs> Why, is Odell shitting on people? No, there was a rumor that uh, he'd like getting shit on. Who did? Adele uh, Beckham Jr. It was it was from a podcast. It was like these girls that their podcast blew up because they were just they they released some information about somebody and then like it's like the following week it's like all of a sudden they had information about Adele. So it was like either they were just making it up or it really. I mean, I, I wouldn't put it past him. Was it Call Her Daddy? Was it that podcast? Yeah. I think it was... No. Not the... Not the... Hold on, let's look this up. Tell back on... Shit. Who, who is this um, fucking dude? Just, <laughs> he's a fucking football player. Oh. The Instagram model. This chick. Allegedly like to be poop on. Who cares, man? If that's uh, what the dude's into, that's what the dude's into. I don't get the fucking big deal. I like I joke about yeah. all I joke about all this stuff, but I'm yeah, actually no, that's the whole thing. It's just like you don't know if it was actually defamation of character in the sense that like she was making this shit up just to become famous, or if it was actually true. If it's true, yeah. that's you know, whatever. You know, maybe whatever, man. Just, if that's what the dude's the into. If the dude's maybe in open the door yeah. for a whole bunch of women to be like, hey, listen, I like shit on people's chests, and then you made a whole bunch of more uh, relationships. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right? I mean I I have an entire bit about the like paying prostitutes to shit on my chest. I'm not into any of that stuff, dude. I'm actually rather vanilla. But it's like it's funny to say. You yeah. just you stick to the piss. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'd let Emma Stone piss on me. I'm not. That's not even a joke, dude. <laughs> oh my god. I'm trying to think. There's like that that error. I got Emma Stone. Look at this, blonde. Yeah, she's gorgeous though. She's got those cat eyes. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, oh my god. She a natural redhead or a natural blonde? Uh I think she's red, man. Sexy. She's sexy, right? Sexy she's sexy mm -hmm. all the time, dude. She's weird because she doesn't like she she has wide set eyes. Like That's what she shocked. pulls it off. Like yeah. Um, who? What's her face? Um, oh, you the, know. Uh, you know who I like? The fucking Victoria's Secrets model. Um. But wait, you know who I like? Who um, is it also a Mary Jane? Is uh the new Mary Jane? What's that chick's Zadea? Oh, she played Zadea. She played Mary Jane in the latest uh, Spider Man. Oh, here's a, yeah, but by the way, here's another one. Adriana Lima. Oh, dude, she's so hot. But I'm trying to think of, oh, Cara was the one I was thinking of. Cara Delevingne. Kind of reminds me a little bit of a... Oh, I'm not attracted to this girl. Yeah, it, her, For some, that, that some... I don't think she's... So, yeah, dude... I, I like look objectively she's good she, she's a beautiful woman she just doesn't do it for me but go to well, that's how I was saying about Sandra Bullock like yeah. I still think that she's gorgeous but yeah no I know what you're saying dude but uh type in Zadea yeah she's gorgeous. I think I've I'm, I'm I'm like a 40 year old guy creeping on this 20 year old chick yeah dude she's uh She's gorgeous. Fierce. <laughs> She's a beautiful woman. Mm. 
Oh. Dude, that right, the, just, the, yeah. Right, no, right there. With the, with the, with the classic, like, go back, the classic, like, 50s haircut, go up. Go up one more, one more level in the, yeah, right there, dude, with that, like, 50s haircut. She, dude, she's a beautiful woman. Yeah. All right, this is getting creepy. Uh, let's go yeah, back she's here. too young for me to be <laughs> creeping on, dude. She's, I mean, she's what, 22? A little bit. And, you know, I was talking to a friend who's a girl, and uh, she said, it's not that creepy for you to date girls in their 20s. I'm like, it's a little bit creepy, isn't it? She's like. You got nothing. But she goes, she goes, relate. no, she, what she said to me, she goes, yeah, but you're a good looking guy in your 40s. And I'm like, that's what it always comes down to on whether it's creepy is whether you're good looking or not. <laughs> Yeah. Well, no. The difference between the sexual the, harassment the between, and flirting is if and, you're good and looking. Romance is whether the girl's attracted to you or not. <laughs> yeah, it's like who, who said that? So you stand outside. You stand outside with the boombox playing some uh, Peter Gabriel. Um, well, if uh, if she's attracted to you, then yeah, that's romantic. If she's not, that's a fucking stalker. <laughs> I think it was a uh, what's your the fucking um oh my god how come I can't think of her name redhead comedian that did the State of the Union or the I don't know yeah <clears throat> well I've seen her live so well, Michelle Michelle Wolf yeah well I I she's mean she's fucking hilarious dude yeah she's funny but um. I was going to say this, dude. I mean, there's not really any women in the world. They're going to find it. They could have. Jason Momoa could have never talked to a woman in his life. Go up to her house and do the fucking say anything Peter Gabriel song. And there's not a woman on the planet that isn't going to come sprinting out of the house and suck his cock in the front yard. Yeah. Lisa Benet. She's beautiful. No, is that Zoe? Kravitz, yeah, she's beautiful. Mm -hmm. She looks like her mom. Yeah, she does. I think she's married to a white dude, so that gives me hope. No, she's married to Momoa. That's no, Isn't that's she? Zoe. That's Zoe Kravitz. That's Lenny Kravitz's daughter, fool. Yeah. All right. Who's J uh, who's Momoa married to? Uh, Lisa Benet. Oh, okay. That's why I said Zoe looks like her mom. Yeah. Doesn't she? Does she not look exactly like her mom? Yeah. Yeah, I remember her on the Cosby Show growing up. I always thought she was hot. Yeah, yeah look yeah. right there, dude. Tell me. Yeah, same here, man. I remember. I was like, who is this chick? There, that was before. And they, they basically they basically wrote her off the show because. Jesus Christ, I would not want to compete for a woman with either Momoa or Lenny Kravitz. Is that Momoa? That's Momoa without the... Without the... Without, without juice? <laughs> yeah, but that dude's 6'5", bro. He's still 6'5". I mean, yeah, he, he is definitely working out, but he wasn't like jacked like he is today. Dude, every almost every actor when they have a superhero physique is juicing. Chris Helmsworth yeah. was juicing when he's playing Thor. Oh, with 100%. The only one I don't think that was juicing is Chris Pratt because, and he probably was, but if you look at Chris Pratt, he's a big, thick boned fucking Minnesota dude. Dude, dude how bad would it pit, how bad would it piss you off if Lenny Kravis walked up to your wife and started hitting on her? Because you know. Even if the dude's not famous, there's a high likelihood this guy might fuck your girl. <laughs> yeah, he just, he looks like he's suave. <laughs> you know? Like, I can't compete with, that, with this, carpet. dude. He's Remember the carpet scarf? <laughs> yeah, he's wearing a weird scarf and he's a super <laughs> handsome dude. Like, it, then you add in that he is Lenny Kravitz and you're like, I'm <laughs> fucked. Yeah, he's the only one that can just, like, roll up 
his like his like living room entrance rug, walk out with sunglasses and girl boots you. on, and just be like, "Yeah, that dude can bang your girl." He's wearing Uggs. He's wearing Uggs in a carpet that you buy at, at IKEA, <laughs> and he's still. Where did he buy it from? He's still fifty-five. He's still fifty-five thousand times more attractive than I'll ever be. Yeah, look how young he looks. I mean, this was years ago, though. Dude, he still looks young today. Sixty-four, dude. So he's what fifty-one. Yeah. Okay, so he's in his fifties, man. Wearing weird shit, slinging <laughs> dick out there. I'm doing. The thing is, I'm doing a. I'm doing a. I'm it, doing a pod. Looks like he's. A, I mean, this is when you can tell he's in his thirties. But like all these pictures, you can't tell whether he's forty or fifty. Like, no, he's like John Wick, dude. You don't. It's like Keanu said, Reeves. You don't know whether Keanu Reeves is twenty or seventy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, you've seen the latest Spill and Ted. You, you could definitely tell. But he's fifty-five years old. Do you think you're gonna look that good when you're 55 as Keanu? No, hell no, dude. Dude, he see he like he, he he with what Keanu did right there is is really good looking younger dude, but then aged more handsome with the, like the beard and shit. You're like, I don't want that guy hitting on my girl either. Yeah. You know, did you know that Keanu Reeves is a legit bad motherfucker, too? Oh, I'm sure he is, dude. I've seen Legit, like, like legit him. into BJJ and shit. Got into martial arts when he was filming The Matrix. Mm. Dude, he'll beat you up. Yeah, dude. Mm. All right, so what was the last one? It was Emma Stone's... Emma Stone's. Emma, Emma Sto- Kidney Stone's. Wow. <laughs> Fucking Zoe Kravitz. Oh, you know who else, dude? Hold up. Zoe Zaldana. Oh, yeah, dude. I love her, too. Gamora. Yeah. I've always... I've had a crush on her since she... Yeah, I've had a crush on her since she was in Drumline. I watched Drumline in, like, the early 2000s, and I've had a crush on her since then. Yeah, she's gorgeous, dude. She's a beautiful creature. If you're going to throw her into the fuck, Mary kill thing, I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm going to marry Zoe Saldana. <laughs> uh, Who is this? Mm-hmm. In? Jessica right. Alba? Alba. Yeah. Yeah, she's beautiful, dude. Um... That's one of the things <clears throat> that was really weird. If you go back and you watch the Fantastic Four, um, mm-hmm. they put blonde hair on her and blue contacts to make her Sue Storm. Because that's traditionally what Sue Storm looks like. If you're just going to cast Jessica Alba. Why don't you just let her look like Jessica Alba? You know what I mean? <laughs> well, what was the point of that? Yeah. You're, she's beautiful. Yeah, they fucked up with those movies, though. Yeah, the Fantastic Four is a badass intellectual property, and they just made stupid shit out of it. Doctor Doom is an amazing villain, and then they just... I don't <clears throat> i don't understand how you make a bad video game or movie or a bad comic book movie. I just don't understand how you do it. You have to be trying. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, oh, well, we know this is going to make money regardless if it's good or not. So you have... Just didn't put any effort into it. So. For comic books, I'm like, you have 50 years, almost 100 years of stories written for you and you made a bad movie? How is that possible? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They did that with a couple of fucking mm-hmm. movies, though. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not big on just Marvel movies in general. I feel like 
Um, they they hit it really good with a couple of great ones, and then it's just been cash cow ever since. And well, <clears throat> people are just watching them because they're fanboys, and they're not even realizing that the movies are shit. Come on, when was the last time you seen a fucking Sixth Sense or like or a fucking? Go back, dude. Uh, do me a favor. Do me a favor. If you're like you're hanging out with Myrna tomorrow night, and you're, you guys are having a fucking movie night, watch the Outlaw Josie Wales. There's more character development in 15 minutes in that movie than there is in the entirety of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh. You're talking Clint Eastwood, dude? Of course. That's what... You know, when I was young, I started watching westerns. And it's still my favorite genre of movie, that and samurai films. Because they're the same thing. Oh, yeah. They're the the it's the outlaw comes to town and imposes orders. But order. But um dude, you Eastwood Westerns are just some of the best movies ever made. The good, the bad, the ugly. Dude, I, I watched I did I tell you I watched Million Dollar Baby a couple of months ago? No. Oh my god, dude! That movie fucked me up. <laughs> it's a great movie, Hillary. <clears throat> dude, hey. I watched that on the worst. Dude, if you're ever having a bad day and you're just like, or just like, gone through some fucking traumatic shit, do not watch that movie. I went, like, I I got off work and I was just like, oh shit, man. Like, it was just, it was, it was the day that like half of my coworkers were let they let go, right? And, yeah. Um, I was just like, what the fuck, you know, taking it to heart. Like, I was like, I need to, like, I got off work and I was like, I put on a comedy. I put on Jim Jeffries' new special, which was fucking hilarious. And I was like, all right. Yeah, I was laughing a lot. And I was like, this is great. And then I went on, Net I was still on Netflix. And I was like, just flipping through. I was like, oh, I was like, I, I've been wanting to watch this movie for the longest time and never seen it. Not realizing that, oh, I, maybe I shouldn't watch this movie. Dude, that movie fucking got me so bad where I was crying like a fucking baby, dude. Like a fucking baby. I'm sitting there, I'm like, what the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> the fucking Morgan Freeman scene where he, he fucking comes back and he, he's like 110 fights after he beats the fucking... Sh yeah, dude. That, the whole movie is just priceless. Well, dude, uh, um... Try watching the Chris Watts documentary and then having to go do stand up that night. What documentary? <laughs> the Chris Watts documentary on Netflix. That was the dude that out in Colorado killed his two little babies and then strangled his pregnant wife. Who I just want to get in a rear naked choke so badly and choke the life out of him. I watched that documentary and then somehow. Somehow went out and had a good set. That's uh, what's that saying about you, Jay? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That was what was concerning about me is that I could go out and sling jokes. And I even had a Chris Watts joke in my set. And the joke is this. Everybody takes the Chris Watts tragedy, the documentary, and they get upset by it. But I found it to be an up uplifting tale of how a dachshund hound survived a family annihilation event. Because Chris Watts didn't kill his dog. <laughs> kill the dog. <laughs> the dog survived. And then I go, not like that asshole up in Orlando that killed his entire family and his golden retriever. I'm like, the fucking dog, dude? I understand the wife and kids. You come home, your wife's bitching about the bills, your kids, they don't do their homework, they don't eat their vegetables. Yeah, fucking kill them. But the dog... That's the only person that'll love you after your horrible act. Dude, uh, you you watch Answer the Internet, right? The fucking Barstool Sports questions. No. And I'm sorry, this just reminded me of it. But um, fucking, they had, uh, what's his name from the bonfire? Not Jay Orkerson, but... Um, Luis uh, Gomez? Uh, Dan, Dan... Dan Soder. Okay. 
I'm gonna right. drink. I'm gonna drink, drink one more beer. And they asked him, they're like, "All right, you know how they they always ask like the most ridiculous questions, just like, oh, would you do this for a million dollars, whatever." But one, his question was, um, if there was somebody that you had to sleep with, and then immediately they would die immediately after, who would it be? And then without hesitation, he goes, "Oh, oh, easy." And then he goes, "Hold up." <laughs> Casey Anthony. <laughs> That's funny, dude. That's funny. I was going to say Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Just because I like to push myself. Ugh. I don't know how much Viagra and alcohol I would need to ingest to fuck Hillary Clinton. Dude, Tim Dillon was just here last week. I wish, you know, there wasn't a pandemic because I would have fucking gone to see him in a second, dude. Tim Dillon's funny. Yeah, man. Um, this whole, I, I, I think I sent you a screenshot. Like, Size Splitters has a legit lineup the next couple of months. Uh, well, that's like, because... It's like all the New York comedies, be, comedians, because none of the comedians could really... Uh, They're leaving. Cuomo's, yeah, act, well, that's the thing. They Cuomo's acting like, up there, so they're, they're coming down here. Cuomo's acting like an emperor. <laughs> I mean, he's, he shuts everything down. Oh, we'll tax the wealthy to bring it back around. Oh, well, they left the city. Now you don't have any revenue, fuckface. Um, they're making it seem like there's so many people that left the city. And there's a lot of people that left the city, but supposedly, statistically, this is, I don't know, the source on this, it was on one of the things, I don't know how true it is, but they said that um, uh, there's actually more people moving to the city during the pandemic than people leaving the city. Yeah, I don't know, but that's not the statistics I read. Mm -hmm. I don't know, though. Have you seen all the... Dude. It's funny, I've seen... Every single one of these stand-ups. <laughs> dude, um, you know what I was going to say, dude? Yeah, we were talking about good movies. Like, the movies today, I know we're getting random now because I'm getting drunk. That's why I'm drinking one yeah, more beer yeah, and ending this podcast. But, uh, dude, I have to add one movie genre to my, my list of favorites, and that's mob movies. Because it's like... he. he you're not going to find more character development in a Marvel movie than you will in a Bronx tale nope. in, or good like a Bronx tale. Like they, they have more character development in five minutes in that movie. Like I, I dude, I will tell you right now. I like Goodfellas as much as it's over the top. It's just like uh, same reason why people liked, uh, you know, Wolf of Wall Street. Scorsese yeah, Wolf of Wall Street's over great. The top with every all of his movies, you know, whether it was Cas uh, Casino, The Departed, Cape Fear, Raging Bull, The, yeah, Departed. the Departed. Every movie, he just he was always pushing the limits, and it was just it was great. But there's something Goodfellas. Bill Burr says it best about that whole movie. It's it's all climax, like every single scene. It's perfect. Something. Just like even though the, the it's perfect, like the Goodfellas, like, Goodfellas is <laughs> perfect story that. is perfect storytelling. So is a Bronx Tale. People sleep on that movie, dude. But remember the scene where the fucking Hell's Angels guys go into the bar and then they start insulting mm -hmm. the mafia dudes and they, they come out and door. just fuck yeah. them up. And yeah. like you know, through that in the way that story is told, you're cheering for Sonny. This is a bad guy. You know, you yeah. like this dude. Well, He's what's a bad guy. A movie like that where you're you're cheering for him. Hold on. Oh my god. It's it's like it's a more recent movie, but it's just like uh I can't think. I mean, they've done that with a couple of things, like Dexter, like he's the the serial killer, and I I've, I've never seen the show. But, yeah, but I mean, Sonny's more like. Well, I'm honestly, they're on that level. A lot of those mob guys were serial ki serial killers, but um, our Sopranos, the Sopranos, Sopranos. I mean, yeah, that's a perfect example. You 
you like Tony Soprano. You want the bad guy to win. But that's the same thing as like when you see Sonny get killed in a Bronx tale, you're like, you feel bad. And this guy objectively is a bad guy. But you also realize on some level that this could be a dude that you knew, who you weren't involved with, who you know he's a bad dude, but he's nice to you because you're not involved in that kind of life and you always treat him with respect. Like that's what, that mm-hmm. it's like I could picture myself in that neighborhood. I pop into the bar. I know Sonny's a mobster. He says, hey, Jay, what's going on? I'm like, nothing, man. How you been? Blah, blah, blah. Good. I know what he's doing. He's, you know, doing his mafia shit. And I just talk to him. I'm like, hey, man, like it, we talk, we have a few laughs. He goes about his business. He knows I'm not involved in the life. And I like him, even though he's a bad dude. And then what's his face actually spent time in jail. <laughs> oh, Lilo, Lilo Bronco, because he got, he started smoking crack. You ever, if you ever watch the interview with Chaz Pominari on that, you can just see the seething and the anger at the decisions that kid made because Chaz kind of tried to act as a father figure to him and a mentor. It's crazy. Have you? I, I forgot what documentary I watched, but it was about like the like the mafia and stuff like that. So there are certain characters you'll see only in mafia movies. I mean, a couple of other ones, but like Chaz uh, Pomentary is one of them, I believe. And then like, um, what's her face from Goodfellas? Karen. Uh, she's also from Sopranos. She's the she's oh the, Lorraine Bronco, the psychiatrist. Yeah, she's also yeah, she's also and she's like. Johnny Depp's mom in uh in uh what's that movie Donnie Brasco? Oh Donnie yeah Donnie Brasco but No no no, no not Donnie like Brasco not not Donnie Brasco Blow Blow with Johnny Depp Blow She's oh yeah well guess who else is his father another person in fucking all these Ray movies. Liotta dude Ray, who doesn't Ray love Ray Liotta But um uh but yeah, it's like they they specialize in like um, psychiatry uh, or like just like doc like they almost like really to the documentaries and the like the the personality behind these people that they're so great at that they ended up acting you know like and they just they're portraying these people and, and they most of the time they're just doing those roles. You did know? you did you um, uh, there was a there was a, one of Rogan's podcasts. Um, the dude who played, um, it was two of the guys from the Sopranos on Rogan's podcast. And this is why I'll forever love James Gandolfini. <clears throat> Harvey Weinstein told James Gandolfini he was going to do press for this movie. And James Gandolfini <laughs> said on the phone to Harvey Weinstein, he said, listen, you fat fuck. If you ever tell me I'm going to do something again, I'll come down to your studio and whoop your fucking ass. James Gandolfini doesn't seem like a dude you fuck around with. I'm not fucking around with that dude. But <clears throat> they said he's like the nicest guy in the, the nicest guy in the world, except when Harvey Weinstein told him he was going to do some shit. He threatened to beat the shit out of him. <laughs> I saw him like month before he died he was on the set of a. he's a big uh, dude wasn't he I was in, yeah he's, he's like he was, he's he like was, six foot and like he 240 looked a lot bigger on, oh yeah he was tall but like he wasn't like for some reason the sopranos you think he's like a lot more overweight than he really was but he, he really wasn't crazy overweight you know what you know but, what james um, you know what james gandolfini is He's that dude that, like, guys that are, like, slimmer look at, and they're like, that fat fuck can't do anything. And James Gandolfini is surprisingly fast and strong. Even though he's got a little bit of a gut, he's like that, he's like a Kevin James type build. I'm just, I'm telling you, he's yeah, thick so bones. He'll beat the, that's a great movie, The Drop, the end scene. Yeah, the set. The I end remember? scene I was, where, I was where Tom Hardy. I've ex- never seen it. Dude, you've got to watch The Drop. That is a great, that is a great mafia movie. Dude, in the end scene is you think Tom Hardy is retarded through the whole movie. 
but he's not. He's the real fucking deal, and he's really intelligent, too. Jay, dude, The Drop is a great movie. No shit, man. Um, we can't have too much dead air time. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> like, it matters at this point, dude. We were just talking about fucking Mary Oh, anybody who it. listened um, to this already tuned out a long time ago. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, it, it's, it's done. But, um, yeah, with Gandolfini... I saw him on that set. It was in Brooklyn. Go up a little bit. We knew. Go up a little bit. Yeah, so James Gandolfini, Tom Hardy's like 5'10", so James Gandolfini's probably about 6 foot. Because Tom Hardy's closer in the picture. Mm-hmm. But yeah, 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 go on. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to find the fucking picture when I was down there, because we ended up seeing Tom Hardy and we're like, we ended up taking some pictures with him. Um, Who? Sh- 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 you and your friends? No, nah, my sister. My sister knew somebody that was uh, on that set or something like that. But yeah, anyways, yeah, Gandolfini walked by. I was like, oh shit! Like I didn't know that he was gonna be there. I'm like, oh, it's fucking Tony Soprano. <laughs> like, what's up? So I was just like, yeah, what's going on, guy? And he's like, yeah, what's going on? He's super nice. Just whatever. Did you really call him Tony Soprano? No, I didn't say that to him. I was just thinking in my head. I was like, oh, it's Tony Soprano. But I was just like, yeah, just said, said hi. Dude, that's awesome. Then, yeah, like a month later, like a month later, that's when he like died. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah that dude... Um, yeah, it's, it's 1225. I was ready to go to sleep fucking four hours ago. And if you can tell, that's why this podcast just really went south about an hour ago. Um, yeah, no worries, <laughs> brother. No worries, brother. We'll call, we'll call it, a, we'll call it a podcast. I got to piss anyways. I got to eat Ambien and go to bed because I got shit to do tomorrow for the closing on my house. Oh, so, oh shit. You're actually like legit in the closing process, huh? Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Fucking congrats. Well, we'll throw you a fucking housewarming party or some shit. Dude, I'm going to try. I already, housewarming party. Dude, I already got this one spot I picked out where I'm going to fucking set up a pod, the podcast in the house. Yeah. How many, uh, you said two, two bedroom. So I'll have a guest room. So we could probably just do a podcast. At some point, where you and Myrna come over, we just do a three-person podcast, and then you guys just pass out in the guest bedroom. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah, dude. I'm down for that. Uh, I wonder. All right, man. All right brother. It's been real fucking. Uh, you know, now that we're canceled, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're dude. We got can we got canceled at the fuck Mary kill. Oh yeah, there's a there. You know, that that game's not that game's not progressive in 2020. Don't you know this, Jake? Come on. Well, they're gonna you know, they're gonna nobody else has ever played that game in history. Yeah, but they're gonna they're gonna look at me and be like, that guy's looks are problematic. You can't be talking about women like that. He's got a turtle. He's got background. Dude. <laughs> Right? They're going to be like... Even though it's, it's just audio only, but he's got a turtle on the top shelf. All those... Not turtle bay. All, all those... <laughs> all those... All those muscles, and he's running around with a sea turtle, yeah. a stuffed sea turtle, everywhere in the world. Oh, my God, dude. All right, man. All right, brother. I'll, I'll let you up later, dude. Oh, by the way... Uh, I got to take a piss. really wants to do a podcast. Okay. So we'll do that sometime this week. All right. All right. Hey. Oh, yeah. Okay. We'll talk.